Prior to the beginning of work, a complete construction... two basic conditions that make rat life possible. One is the availability of food. The other is the availability of harborage. The rat always tries to find a nesting place close to its food supply. The rat tends to confine its movements to a limited home range around the feeding and harborage areas. Cutting off the food supply reduces the rat population, since rats must spend more and more of their time searching their home range for food, and even extending their search to adjoining areas. When food supplies are restricted, fierce competition develops for whatever food can be found. In these struggles, some rats are killed. The survivors then fight for the opportunity to feed on the dead. Others abandon their customary home range in a desperate search for new food sources. In doing so, they expose themselves to increased risks and accidents. The mortality rate rises considerably. When rats risk seeking food at sources already controlled by other rat colonies, the scavenging rat is often treated as an enemy and driven off or killed. Cleaning up rubbish and rat harborage cuts down the rat population. Routed from their nesting places, many rats are killed. Rats that escape expose themselves in unfamiliar territory. A rat deprived of its customary food or harborage, or of both, has little chance of survival. On the other hand, killing rats without disturbing their food or harborage merely lessens competition. Within a short time, the rat population will reach its previous proportions. Control of the rat, therefore, can be permanent only if based on the removal of the two fundamentals of rat life, food and harborage. Rats can only be eliminated permanently by thorough sanitation. Sanitation involves good housekeeping outside premises as well as inside. The first step in a sanitation program is an attack on garbage and litter. Such refuse and litter must be cleaned up. To do so deprives the rat of both food and harborage.
Sanitation includes removal of bits of food and nesting materials collected by the rats. Garbage cans should be made of heavy gauge metal, galvanized to prevent rusting. The cover should be close fitting and must be applied tightly so that rats and domestic animals will be unable to dislodge them. A wide rim should protect the bottom. The bottom should be made of double thickness. The can should be placed on a concrete slab at least four inches thick. Such cans make garbage inaccessible to rats. They are an excellent step along the road to rat control. Sanitation, if it were complete enough, might by itself achieve rat control. The nearer this goal is approached, the more effective is the control. Storage of garbage is a necessary part of community living. Yet this important function is usually neglected. Open garbage containers found almost everywhere provide the rats basic needs for existence. Where a considerable quantity of garbage must be stored, a rat-proof garbage house should be provided. It should be of the walk-in type and must be both rat-proof and fly-proof. The door should be self-closing. The garbage cans should be rat-proof with tight-fitting covers. Frequent and regular washing will keep the garbage house clean and free from unpleasant odors. An adequate garbage house, properly serviced, is an effective means of reducing rat infestation. Garbage houses may be inside as well as outside buildings. Shifting of garbage from one container to another provides opportunities for spillage. Such spillage reduces the effects of good storage and adds to the rat's food supply. Wherever possible, garbage cans should be carried directly to the garbage trucks. Thus, accidental spillage is avoided. Garbage, in transit or otherwise, must be made inaccessible to rats. The garbage truck, therefore, should be spill-proof and easy to load. Where modern garbage trucks are not available, a dump truck may be used temporarily. However, the truck should be watertight with an incline at the rear to prevent liquids from running out. A canvas cover should be used at all times to protect full and partial loads from spilling and being blown from the truck. A device which eliminates the individual garbage can, as well as the need for emptying it into a truck, is a gadget called a movable garbage storage and carrier box. When properly located and intelligently used, it eliminates storage of garbage on the premises as a source of rat food. At regularly scheduled intervals, the storage box is inspected. When full, a specially designed truck comes to pick it up.
the box is hoisted onto the truck by a hydraulic lift. The entire operation can be handled, if necessary, by one man. The truck then carries the box to the garbage disposal site where it will be emptied, washed, and treated with deodorant and insecticide before being returned to its original location on the premises. But good storage and transportation practices are ineffective unless followed by proper garbage disposal. For instance, Garbage dumping on hog farms provides ideal conditions for rat life and creates serious health hazards. Unloading of garbage into open city dumps is an insanitary practice and supports a large rat population. Such practices are not compatible with modern ideas of sanitation and must be eliminated. An efficient means of garbage disposal is the sanitary landfill. For one thing, it requires a minimum capital investment. Also, it allows the use of waste land located close to the center of the collection area, thus cutting down time lost in hauling. In one type of sanitary landfill, the garbage is spread in thin layers in a trench and compacted. This compaction destroys any rats and rat harborages that may be present. A two-foot layer of earth over the compacted garbage eliminates the possibility of later rat infestation. In addition, the earth covering does away with fly breeding and reduces the possibility of spontaneous combustion. An insanitary and unsightly dump can be turned into a healthful and useful area. Another method of garbage disposal is by incineration. For large communities, an incineration plant can be built which requires no separation of combustible and non-combustible matter. In one of the recommended systems, the refuse is fed into a drying grate and proceeds from there through a burning kiln and to a rotating kiln. The rotating kiln continually shifts the burning material so that all food and combustible wastes are consumed. This prolonged drying and burning process practically eliminates the need for auxiliary fuel. Some incinerators, particularly those in small communities, are not satisfactory because of incomplete combustion of garbage. Frequently, such incinerators are designed to process combustible wastes only, thus requiring prior separation of combustible from non-combustible refuse. Since the refuse is not dried in advance or agitated in burning, auxiliary fuel is often necessary. The cost of fuel plus higher labor charges makes this type of incineration more expensive than the sanitary landfill. Also, partially charred garbage taken from the incinerator and dumped on open ground will support a large rat population. Furthermore, the non-combustible waste must still be disposed of, or it may become a harborage for rats. Therefore, even with an incinerator, the sanitary landfill is necessary. Another method of garbage disposal is by grinding, as with a home grinding unit. Most grinding units will accept practically anything 
but such substances as metal, china, and glass. These non-grindable wastes must be stored adequately until they are disposed of, preferably by the sanitary landfill method. With grinding units, grindable wastes are converted to a mash and are discharged directly into the sewers. The important contribution of this method is that it eliminates storage and transport of discarded food. But regardless what method is used, the fundamental principle is to make garbage and rubbish unavailable to rats. Sanitation requires good housekeeping outside and inside premises. This applies to the home as well as to business establishments. In the home, food products must be guarded carefully. Even water is an unnecessary concession to rat convenience. Kitchen carelessness is an open invitation to rats to help themselves to our groceries. Cereals are a favorite rat food. Storage of cereals in rat-proof or rat-repellent containers provides permanent protection against rats. These and similar procedures of food storage are based on making food inaccessible to rats. Objects of sentimental value can accumulate in attics, where the rats find the rubbish to be excellent harborage. The best thing to do is to clean out the attic, thus getting rid of the rats and a fire hazard as well. In commercial establishments, large and small, poor housekeeping provides unlimited food and perfect harborage for rats. Good housekeeping in food storage places is a safeguard against rat infestation. The merchandise should be neatly stacked on racks away from the walls. Two-foot aisles about every four feet permit ready inspection and cleanup. An 18-inch space under the racks permits easy cleaning of the floors. Under these conditions, rat feces and signs of rat habitation can easily be detected and rat eradication accomplished quickly. Proper stacking constant inspection, and efficient maintenance are necessary steps in good premise housekeeping. But the effects of good housekeeping can be nullified if any space, such as a cellar, is left untidy and cluttered with rubbish. Such places should be cleaned up. If any of the materials are needed, they should be properly stacked. Everything of no value should be removed and destroyed. But here is a modern office building with no food storage at all. Yet there are rats. How can they live here? The answer is simple. Again, thoughtlessness and lack of sanitation have provided them with the essentials of life. This is the answer, a rat-proof disposal can for all lunchtime food scraps. Both by guarding food and by disposing of wastes, good sanitation procedures force rats to leave their home ranges and to face the perils of an unfamiliar environment. On the other hand, wherever food is kept, there is always a likelihood of rat infestation. To supplement and reinforce good sanitation measures, 
a technique has been developed, the purpose of which is to block off all passages by which rats might gain entry to a building. Therefore, in addition to depriving the rat of food and harborage, one must also employ the techniques of rat proofing. 